Greetings once again, child of God. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall definitely rejoice and be glad in this day that the Lord has made. This is our Good Friday, a day where we come and celebrate and commemorate the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. On this very same day, we all know what happened to Christ. After being betrayed by one of his trusted disciples, Judas Iscariot, a treasurer in his team amongst the disciples, sold him out to the Pharisees and the chief priests and the Sadducees and all the entire nation of the Jews that came up against him and said, Today you must be crucified against all odds, against all, all normal justice. Jesus was seen with a case that he had to answer for, but he could not even get a lawyer. He could not get fair justice, but Jesus, he was still crucified. He was charged even before the court process, before due process. I recall when he came before the chief priest, Cephas, he scorned him, he mocked him, he even slapped him on the face. They said, even the soldiers thereafter, said, prophesy and let us see if indeed you are the son of man. Who clapped you? Who slept you? I want us to know that on this very same day, our Lord took away our shame. Our Lord took away the curse. Our Lord hung for you and my life. He, came, he went up to the cross just to save us, just to save your life, just to make sure that the benefits of salvation are indeed coming over your life, are coming upon your life. It is for that reason that Jesus Christ was crucified. It was for that very reason that Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross. May we friends today recognize, may we friends today appreciate the benefits of the cross. May we appreciate today the glory of the death of Christ over our lives. He died for our sins. He died for our sins. It is Christ, my friends, who has love for you. The Bible says, For God so loved the world, that whosoever believeth in him should no longer perish, but have eternal life. My friends, it is the eternal life of God. It is not for us to be saved and stay upon the earth. As most now speak a message as if we shall dwell upon the earth. My friends, when Jesus died for us, it was for eternal life. Because there is a life that is coming. There is a life beyond the, the, the life that we, we have. So it is for God who loved the world, that whosoever believeth in him should no longer perish. My friends, the death of Christ came that you and I would have everlasting life. He came so that you and I would be redeemed from the, the, the curse of the law, would be redeemed even from the injustice that the devil has floated against your life. He came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Beloved, it is a day to remember. It is a day to remember when Jesus took away the shame of the world. When Jesus Christ took away your shame and mine and hung on the cross and took away our shame. I feel today it is important that if there is anyone amongst us who has not received Christ as Lord and Savior, 
It is a time indeed to acknowledge the work of Christ upon the cross. The Bible says, with our hearts we believe that indeed he died for our sins. With our hearts we believe that indeed on our own accord we cannot save our own. We cannot save ourselves. We have sinned on the earth. But there is a person that has come to redeem us. There is a person that has come to take away the sin of the world. It is Christ Jesus our Lord. Today you can accept him as Lord and Savior. And with your mouth you can confess him. With your mouth you can receive him today and say Lord Jesus come into my heart. Be Lord and Savior of my life. And this very same day, if you make such a prayer, the Lord will come into your life and dwell in your life and will remove the shame from your life, will remove the sin from your life. It is no longer you that lives, but Christ who lives within you. Someone might be saying, is it possible? Yes, it is. God does not look at you through your abilities. But God now looks at you through the cross. He looks at you now through the, the body, the life of Jesus. Because it is Jesus that makes us acceptable. Just like in times past, the priest would observe the sheep that we was brought in for atonement to see if this sheep was perfect. If the priest um, 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 re recognizes that the sheep is perfect, then the sheep was taken into the altar, killed and brought in as a sacrifice. My friends, it is by the perfection of Christ that we are made acceptable. Not because we are perfect. No. Not because we are better. No. But because of Christ who has died for us. It is him who makes us acceptable. So I implore you this morning, wherever you are, wherever you may be, there is Christ who can make you acceptable. May you receive him today and make him Lord and Savior over your life. In your family, make him Lord and Savior. Maybe you are the leader of your family. You can redeem your family, my friend. You can redeem your entire family that they may come to the knowledge of Christ. May the Lord bless you as you do so today. Amen. I want us to continue with our subject matter today, dealing with altars. I feel it strong in my heart this morning that those that are without Christ may come to him. I feel so strong that our God was lifted up. He is able to save. He is mighty to save. I remember when I, I got born again. My, my, my mother knows very well in my family. I was quite sickly. Though I was very naughty, but I was very sickly, I had lots of allergies. I was allergic to lots of things. And I also had hemorrhage. I would be bleeding from my nose, and it closed up and come through my mouth. And, you know, um, I don't know what was wrong with me. But I know one thing. Jesus fixed me. He fixed my life. The doctors were amazed. I was no longer coming to take the allergy medication and all these yearly injections that would do on me and screen me. I realized after I got saved, three months, ah, I've not been taking my medication. What happened? Jesus set me free. I know he can set you free. I don't know what is binding you. I don't know what is holding you, what is gripping you. But come to Jesus as you are. And Jesus 
we will deliver you. Amen. Let us turn our Bibles to the book of Judges, chapter number 6 this morning. I desire us to, to conclude possibly by tomorrow on the subject of altars. Uh, I desire that we may establish this altar. Um, I have received quite a lot of messages of encouragement and people uh, saying they wish these altars to continue. Yes, I desire the same that you may continue wherever you are. Do not stop the altar after the lockdown. Wherever you are, it is, it is time to establish this altar and to cause this altar to be perpetual. I will show you quickly. Judges chapter number 6. I desire that we read from verse 1 to verse 10. Judges chapter number 6. We are reading from verse 1 to verse number 10 of Judges chapter number 6. Amen. <clears throat> then the sons of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord gave them into the hands of Midian seven years. The power of Midian prevailed against Israel. Because of Midian, the sons of Israel made for themselves the tents which were in the mountains and the caves and the strongholds. For it was when Israel had sown that the Midianites would come up with the Amalekites and the sons of the east and go against them. So they would come against them and destroy the produce of the earth as far as Gaza, and leave no sustenance in Israel, as well as no sheep, ox, or donkey. For they would come up with their livestock and their tents. They would come in like locusts for number. Both they and their camels were innumerable, and they came into the land to devastate it. Verse 6. So Israel was brought very low because of Midian. And the sons of Israel cried to the Lord. Now it came about when the sons of Israel cried to the Lord on account of Midian that the Lord sent a prophet to the sons of Israel and he said to them, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, it was I who brought you up from Egypt and brought you out from the house of slavery. I delivered you from the hands of the Egyptians and from the hands of all your oppressors and dispossess them from you, dispossess them before you and gave you their land. And I said to you, I am the Lord your God. You shall not Fear the gods of the Amorites in whose land you live, but you have not obeyed me. But you have not obeyed me. There are three, four things that I want us to look into before we pray. The Bible says. The sons of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. What was the evil that they did? They raised altars to Baal. They raised altars to other gods. They put significance to the worship of other gods. They put significance to the worship of other spirits, 
other powers that ruled their land, that they began to teach their children, and they forgot who delivered them. They forgot who gave them the blessing. They forgot who gave them the ability, the strength to accumulate wealth. They forgot. <laughs> Just like some of us today. They prayed. They fasted. For the job. And today, they are working and they have a good job, they have forgotten about God. The one who gave them a breakthrough. Now, we have turned into our own strength. We are doing things on our own accord. We have forgotten to honor God with our substance, with our tithes and offerings. We have forgotten God. We have put God aside. The sons of Israel did what was evil in the sight of God. They raised up other altars. They began to recognize other altars. They did not want to, 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 to display God. In Romans chapter number 1 verse 16. Romans chapter 1 says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to us that believe. We should not be ashamed. You know, when people, when people are with their friends, they do not want to be associated with God. This is what the Israelites did. They were now ashamed. They felt like it was other people, it was other gods that raised them up. <laughs> Even ashamed of speaking about their own church, about what God has done. They do not want to be associated with God. Listen. The power of Midian prevailed against Israel. The power of Midian prevailed. My friends, if we do not acknowledge God in our lives, if we do not, the power of the wicked one will prevail against us. The power of Midian prevailed. And the Bible says in verse 3, For it was when Israel saw that the Midianites would come up with the Amalekites and the sons of the east and go against them. So they would destroy the produce of the earth and leave no sustenance in Israel and leave no sheep, no ox, no donkey. For they would come up with their livestock and their tents, and they would come in like locusts for number. And they would come to the land to devastate it, my friends. When altars are raised against us, they come to devastate us. They come to destroy the works of your hands. You cannot benefit from the works. You cannot benefit from your plowing, from your sowing, from the toil of your life. You cannot benefit. Why? Because the, the Midianite, the Amalekite, it is a spirit that comes to devastate. It is a spirit that comes to destroy. It is a spirit that comes to bring us law. The Bible says, Israel, verse 6, so Israel was brought very low because of the Midianites. The altars of wickedness desire to bring you low. <laughs> that is why I said when we began, stop staying low. Law is not your position. Tay is not your position. God says when he blesses you, he is not making you the tail, but he is making you the head. 
He says, you shall not be beneath, but you shall only be above, because you should not stay low. Child of God, you cannot stay low. Listen. Verse number 11. Then the angel of the Lord came and sat under the ark. What is happening now? When the children of Israel cried on the account of the Midianites, God called Gideon. Listen to the assignment given Gideon. Verse number 24. Judges chapter number 6. Verse 24 to 26. To 27. Okay. Then Gideon built an altar there to the Lord. And named it, The Lord is Peace. The King James says, Jehovah Shalom. To this day, it is still in opera of the Abyssalites. Now, on the same night, the Lord said to him, Take your father's bull and a second bull seven years old and pull down the altar of Baal, which belongs to your father. And cut down the Asherah that is beside it. Now, God is speaking to him. He says, pull down the altar. Pull down what you have been worshipping in times past. Pull down the habit of non-prayer in your life. Pull down the habit of non-fasting in your life. And raise an altar. The Bible says, God then commanded him, verse 26, and build an altar to the Lord your God on top of this stronghold. Eh? You are building an altar upon the stronghold that has bound your life. The prayerlessness that has bound your life. The neglect of spiritual authority over your life that has bound your life. He says, on top of this altar, build an altar to the Lord. Build an altar to the Lord. Listen how he says. He says, build an altar to the Lord your God on the top of this stronghold in an orderly manner. In an orderly manner. In a, a, an orderly fashion. In a regimented fashion. Which means you must be in a consistent fashion. <laughs> that is why I was telling other people. I said lockdown or no lockdown. I am still a tiger. Because for me, it is it. I, I am orderly in my in my practice. I know how to bring the enemy under subjection. I know how to cause the curse to be under my feet. You, child of God, the Bible says, in an orderly manner, be orderly, child of God. As we raise an altar today, as we are raising an altar to the Lord. I pray that you may be orderly. I pray that you may be consistent. I pray that you may continuously pound the enemy in an orderly manner. And take a second bowl and offer upon a burnt offering with the wood of the Asherah which you shall cut down. The Asherah was an idol which was next to the the, 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 the art. He says, take it, use it. My friends, let it be known what you have destroyed. Put it on the fire. You make sure there is no sign because you are raising an altar to the Lord. Then Gideon took ten of the men, the men of his servants 
and did as the Lord had spoken to him. And because he was too afraid of his father's household, and the men of the city to do it by day, he did it by night. How you do it, I don't care. Doing it at night, but you are raising an art. The Bible says, Daniel, even though the, the order from King Nebuchadnezzar had come out that there should be no worship in, 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 in Babylon, the Bible says, Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel, he continued to pray to God. Even though the king of Babylon had refused them, he continued to pray to God. I'm saying to you, this that we are, we are establishing today, you child of God must continue against all odds. The Bible says in verse number 28 to 30, the men of the city then wanted to kill Gideon. Why? Because he had raised an altar. My friends, that you have raised an altar, it does not mean people will be happy, will be pleased. The people, even from your church, might not be happy. Why? You have raised an altar. It has come to destabilize. The altar that has come over your life, the altar that you are raising up, it has come for healing and deliverance. The things that you begin to see in your life, as you raise an altar, you will see healings and deliverance. You are going to see a spirit of grace and supplication that will be released as you continue. There are things that God is going to do in our lives. That is why we want to raise this altar. We want to ensure that the altar of the Lord is burning. We want to ensure we are not afraid of a lockdown. Many people are making fun. Our oh, churches are closed now. We are not closed. No one can stop us from praising God. No one can stop us from praying to our God. No one can stop us from continuing the message of the cross. It doesn't mean that now we can't meet in our church. It's all closed up. No. We, can, we are still calling on our God. Raise an art. Number three. There shall be mass salvation of people as we continue calling on the altar. Your family members will be saved. Your colleagues at work will be saved. Your boss will be saved. Why? We are raising an altar. It is at the altar, my friend, that we are breaking strongholds. We are breaking things that has engraved people for years. We are bringing them under subjection. We are calling on our God. Our God is able to save. He is mighty to save. Visions and revelations shall be released. As we raise an altar, visions that were promised in the book of Joel, that in the last days, young men shall see visions and dreams. Old men shall dream dreams. These are the visions that will be released. Revelation shall be released. In your working place, you will have visions, you will have revelation on how to deal with matters, how to solve issues. This is the year of divine exploits, unlocking divine exploits, unlocking divine exploits and solutions in your time. Lastly, open heavens shall be over your life as you continue with this raised heart. Open heavens. In the book of Deuteronomy, the Bible says, the Lord shall open his good treasure. He will open, he will open his good treasure over your life. He will open his good treasure over your life, my friends. It is the Lord's good treasure that he shall open. And he says, the heavens above you shall no longer be brass. My friends, when we continue with the altar, the heavens above you, the heavens above you will be open continuously. I charge this day that the heavens above your life may no longer be brass. When you pray, may the Lord hear you. When you pray, may the Lord answer you. When you pray, he says, when we raise the altar, 
The Lord answers King Solomon in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 14. He said, Then I, God, will come down and heal our land. God will heal, my friend. When we raise an altar, God comes down and begins to heal our families, begins to heal our marriages, begins to heal our children, begins to reconcile. He begins to restore the years that the locusts and the cattle has stolen. The Lord restores when we raise an altar. I want to implore you, child of God, continue raising an altar to the Lord. Continue praying unto the Lord. God will restore, my friend. He will restore years. He will restore times that you have lost. He will restore times that you feel you have lost in the lockdown. He will restore the losses that you think you have lost. God will make a way, my friend. Raise an altar to Him. He makes a way. After 400 years, who knew that the children of Israel in Egypt will be set free by a mighty and strong hand? God is about to display a mighty and strong hand over your life. The Lord is about to break the net of Pharaoh. Pharaoh is about to let you go. My friend, your children are yet to be released. We are not going out alone. This is what Moses said. What as the harm is so far, we are taking our little ones. We are taking our old ones. We are taking all our belongings. I am declaring the story. I'm saying, Pharaoh, let the children God to serve God. My friends, the altar has come. The altar has come to bring liberation. I pray this morning that as we raise an altar to the Lord, as Jesus was raised high, as the serpent was raised in the wilderness, so is Christ lifted up today. So is Christ raised today for our deliverance. Let us acknowledge him. Let us bring him in into our lives. Father, I pray this morning, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, Spirit of the living God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, God, that answer it by fire. I pray, King of glory, even this morning, in the name of Jesus, I commit the children of God, even their substance, my God, that is held up by Pharaoh, that is held up by the Midianites, that is held up by the Amalekites, who have come to destroy their produce, that they may never enjoy, my God, the, the work of their hands. Even this day, I pray, in the mighty name of Jesus, I am commanding Pharaoh, let the children of God go. In the name of Jesus, let their finances free. In the name of the Lord, I pray every creeper. I break every encumbrance. My God that has entangled their finances. Every curse that has enjoined itself with the finances of the believer. It could be their money, my God, that they sacrifice. And you first prophets. My God, I pray, redeem today as you have been lifted up upon the cross. You have come, my God, to break away the curse. Even the curse of poverty. I pray this morning in the name of Jesus. I declare a liberation unto finances. I release a financial breakthrough. I release a death cancellation. I release favor, my God, in the area of, of, of finance, in the area, my God, of financial stability. I pray this morning in the name of Jesus. Let the children of Egypt begin to give into their bosom. Let them begin to give them as they depart out, as they launch out, even today, in the name of Jesus, I charge and declare, in the name of Jesus, I seek to release my God, even this morning, I decree my God, I say, Father, it is high time that the children of God are released, in the name of Jesus, it is high time that the children of God move out to worship God in liberation, out of your cup, in the name of Jesus, I declare my God, even at this time and hour, I pray, mighty God, in the name of Jesus, every curse, every power of wicked altars that has risen up against their lives, every altar that is rising, risen up in their family line, in their generations, my God, even this day we are silencing the power of those wicked altars in the name of Jesus. We are subordinated in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare that even you, that God, you are going to fall face down even before the mighty God. 
In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I break every yoke this morning. It is by the power of the anointing that every yoke shall be destroyed. Every yoke of bondage will be destroyed. You yokes of bondage, in the name of Jesus, we break you now. In the name of Jesus, you groping in the night, you spells of madness, you spells of vagabonding, we are breaking you right now. In the name of Jesus, we are bringing in order, we are instituting order in manner upon the people of God. We are releasing a spirit of obedience. Even this day, in the name of Jesus, every stubbornness, every stiff nakedness, I come against it now in the name of Jesus. I remove every high order that seeks to exalt itself against the knowledge of Christ. We are pulling it down. We are casting it down. In the name of Jesus, we are raising my God. Even this day, in Jesus' mighty name, we are speaking judgment over every word spoken upon your people, my God, from beats of hell, from witch doctors, from witches, from false prophets. In the name of Jesus, we are condemning every word spoken against their lives. We are saying, Arise, O Jehovah, and let all your enemies be scattered. I pray this morning in Jesus' name. Chapisa Mosi, Tita Tabo, Chapisa Mosi, Batanati, Chapisa Mosi, Baba Melenabo, get out, Marat Jesu. We are declaring, my God, that you shall arise, even unto their lives, O God. They are taking their position. I release my God even their possessions. They are taking them up in the name of Jesus. They are taking their rightful possessions in society. They are taking their rightful possessions in their families. They are taking their rightful possessions spiritually. They are taking their rightful possessions in the name of Jesus. In the working place, I declare today every spirit of the Amalekites that desires to keep the children of God in a low position. We are taking over. We are defeating them. We are conquering the spirit of the Amalekites. We are raising up a three strong army. Even this day because you, oh God, you are not restricted to save by many. My God with a few. You are going to change the company with a few. You are going to change even the family line with a few. You are going to change the entire nation in the name of Jesus. For you, O oh God, are not restricted to save by many. Father, I pray, even this morning, use your people, Father, wherever they are, redeem my God, redeemed by the power of the blood. You said, my God, greater miracles shall these perform, my God. After you have gone, you, they shall perform greater miracles. I pray, Father God, use these, O people, whenever they go with signs and wonders, following them We charge signs and wonders in every area of their lives. We declare, my God, this day, in the mighty name of Jesus, even the favor of God over them their lives. We declare the grace of the Lord over their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, I release prayer even upon their lives. Prayerfulness, even my God on the altar, so that the altar of the Lord may be kept burning wherever they are. I pray, mighty God, in the name of Jesus, raise an urge, my God, for prayer in their hearts. My God and my King, I pray this morning, let there be an Orderly manner. Let there be an orderly fashion upon their lives. Let there be a consistency of faith in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I now declare your blessing over your people. May your Lord bless them. May your Lord keep them. May your Lord cause your countenance to rise upon their lives. May your Lord be gracious upon them. May your face shine upon their lives like the sun rising from the horizon. With favor and peace, let them live and not die, and declare the works of Jehovah God in the land of the living. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord.